In this video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create a couple of variations of trees using Adobe Illustrator. Now, if you look closely at these trees, they're not very complex. They are simply made up of triangles, rectangles, and circles. So there's not much to them, just very simple shapes combined together to make them look good. Okay, so to get started, we are going to open up a new file in Illustrator. We're going to select the web templates and then choose the minimum size of 1024 by 768 pixels. Click on create when you're good to go. You'll get an empty artboard ready for you to create your design. Now the first thing I want to do is put a rectangle over the top of this artboard as our background. So grab your rectangle tool from the toolbox over here on the left. Change the fill color to, well, it's probably not one of these swatches that we want. I'm going to start with this orange and then go to my color mixer. Try and make that a bit lighter and a bit more pinkish. If anything, it's going to be a real light orange that we're working with. Um, and the stroke, just get rid of that completely. We don't want to stroke on. And starting in the top left corner, when you see the word intersect in pink, you know you're in the top left corner. Drag to the bottom right corner, and again, look for that word intersect and drop it into place. From your layers panel, just expand layer one and lock that rectangle layer into position there so we can't uh, move it or modify it in any way. Probably worth renaming that uh, rectangle to background as well. All right, so background's in place. Let's get started on this first tree. Now, the first tree we're going to be drawing um, will have a trunk that is made using the rectangle tool. So we're going to change our color to a darkish kind of brown. Simply draw a skinny rectangle that will look a bit like a trunk on your screen like so. Okay, it's not much to it so far. Now, what I want to do is um, angle the top of the trunk in a little bit towards the center. So it's a bit of a skinnier top and a bigger bottom. So using my direct selection tool, which is this white arrow in my toolbox, I'm going to click on my shape once and click on the top left hand corner once when the word says anchor in pink just there. That selects this anchor point. You can then click and drag that anchor point a little bit towards the center. Okay. Uh, we can do the same for the right hand side. So click once on that anchor point on the right hand side and then click and drag a second time in towards the center. And it's just a matter of moving those two around until you are happy with how they look. I reckon something like that looks pretty good. All right, now once you've got that trunk drawn, I'm going to get you to grab your selection tool and click on it, and we're going to duplicate it. So hold Alt and simply click and drag across, and you'll get your second copy. Now this is going to be a branch for the tree. It needs to be a lot smaller than what it currently is. So I'm going to hold shift and just drag in from one of the corners to make a very small variation of that trunk. And if you hover just off the corners, you can rotate this shape around by clicking and dragging. And we're just going to overlap these two shapes like so. And now we've got a trunk for the tree and a little branch. I might leave that branch down pretty low. All right, so zooming back, you can see how we're looking at the moment. I might even resize this to make it bigger just while we create it. I'll make it smaller later on. So what we want to do now is put the canopy of leaves into the tree, and we do that by just simply overlapping um, circles. So grab your ellipse tool and change your fill color to a greenish kind of color. If you want, you can go to your color mixer and change it to a green you'd prefer, like me. And it's just like making the clouds. We just overlap a bunch of circles, so hold shift, Draw a heap of circles up the top there, different sizes, some big, some small. And just get them overlapping until we get a decent looking canopy for our tree. And that's not looking too bad. Um, again, grab your selection tool and just play around them a little bit until you're happy. You can highlight them all and move them down on top of the tree. Okay, that's not looking um, too bad. I probably need to make this a little bit bigger. All right, so it's a smallish canopy. That's okay. I can always resize my trunk a little bit here just so it fits a bit nicer. Yeah, it looks good. And I'll resize this branch a little bit too so it's a bit smaller. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Next thing I'll do is just put a couple of um, circles on this um little branch just so we can uh, make it look a bit more realistic i guess so i reckon about three circles will probably do us here and it's just a matter of moving moving them around until they are positioned nicely that's pretty good so there's your first tree not much to it 
Uh, what I do once you finish drawing it is highlight it all and press Ctrl G to group it all together. And from your layers panel, just rename that group to tree number one. So you can zoom back a bit if you want um, and just move that group over to the left hand side. All right, so that's tree number one done. Tree number two, I guess you could call it a pine tree. It's going to be made up of some triangles as well as that rectangle trunk. We'll do the triangles first though. Um, so to do the triangles, we need to get the polygon tool. Uh, we've got a nice green there, so I guess we can just tweak it a little bit so it's not quite the same as the other tree. Maybe ever so slightly darker. I just want you to draw a little triangle to start with. Um, even that is probably a bit too big, so I'm going to make that a bit smaller. All right. I'm then going to duplicate that by holding Alt and clicking and dragging off it. And I want to make this one and a half times bigger than the original triangle. So by clicking on this triangle, you can go up to the Transform section here. If you can't see this Transform section, get it from your Window menu. It's hiding down there. And you'll see a W and a H over here. They stand for Width and Height. You can choose either of these, and I just want you to go to the end of the box, for whichever one you choose, and put in an asterisk, and then write 1.5. That just says it's going to take the current width, uh, sorry, current height in my case, and times it by 1.5. And as long as you've got this little button turned on, and you press enter, it should make the triangle one and a half times bigger than the original. We're going to do that two more times. So we're going to duplicate this shape here now. You can either copy and paste it or hold Alt like I do and just simply drag off it. And what we're going to do here is click on it, go up to the width or the height again. At the end of that box, just put asterisk 1.5, which means times it size by 1.5. And we get another triangle. And we've got one more to put in. So just duplicate this bigger one. Go to the width or height again. Put in an asterisk and write 1.5. So we're timesing it by 1.5 and we've now got four triangles that are going to make up our tree. Now the next thing I want to do is horizontally align the center of these shapes. So I'm going to click and drag over all four of them. And hiding in my align panel here, we can select this second option. Okay, it just gets them all in line. Now, uh, there's no real set method here for me to get these looking good. I just move them around until I'm happy with how they look. Okay, so just move them up and down, each of those. Uh, if you select them like that, they've got a pretty even gap between them. I could probably move this one down a little bit more. Um, not looking too bad. I could probably actually nudge it back up a bit now, that top one. I reckon that looks like a pretty decent pine tree, if you ask me. Um, maybe... These two could be nudged up once. There we go. Well, I won't fuss with it too much, but that's a pretty decent looking pine tree. Okay. Uh, another thing we can do is bring in the trunk now. So let's get the rectangle tool. And I might just choose this brown over here. Now, if you want to choose this exact brown, instead of going to your swatches and picking it, what you can do is grab this tool here called the eyedropper tool. And just click on that brown, and you watch my fill color over here change to that exact color. So now I've got that exact color picked. We're seeing a bit of consistency between our images now. So I am going to grab my rectangle tool and draw a little trunk down the bottom here. It doesn't really matter what size. Um, if you highlight all of them, we might horizontally align the center of them again. They are all centered nicely. Now one thing we can do to make it look a little bit more like a flat design um, is grab our rectangle tool, change the color to black, and simply draw. I'm going to start from the center of this tree and just draw over the leaves, not the trunk part, just the leaves, and draw this black box. I'll change its opacity to, I don't know if I'm going to go 20%. Yeah, 20% looks good. And then I'm going to remove this excess um, black rectangle out here, but leave the dark bits on top of the green tree. To do that, we use the Shape Builder tool, which is in our toolbox over here, the two little circles with an arrow pointing to them. All you need to do is hold Alt on your keyboard, and oops, we need to select everything here first. Grab that Shape Builder tool, hold Alt on your keyboard, and click in this black space, and it will remove that black section outside of the tree. 
Now we can do the same for the trunk, but we're just not going to do it as much. So I'm going to zoom in on this and draw a little black rectangle over just part of the trunk. So maybe about that much. Change the opacity again to 20%. Remember the opacity is just how transparent a shape is. And I'll grab my Shape Builder tool and just hold Alt and click in this. Oops, I forgot to select the brown bit too. We need to select both shapes here. Then I can grab the Shape Builder tool, hold Alt and click in this outside section. It will delete it. Okay, so now I've got a bit of a shadow on the trunk and a bit of a shadow on the tree. And if I zoom back, you can see both trees there looking pretty good. And I'll just group this last tree. So I'll just select everything and press Control G. Uh, I'll change that group to tree two. Feel free to resize them if you want. I always hold shift when I resize and drag from a corner. Make them nice and big. Remember, they're never going to lose quality when you make them nice and big. That's the joy of working with vectors. And I'll make this fellow a bit bigger too, so you can get a good idea on how they look. All right, so there we have it. We have got two different trees done using Adobe Illustrator. I'll catch you in the next video tutorial.